Good day, fellow investors. Yesterday we discussed Adidas maiden analysis and we have shown how analysts were extremely bullish when the stock was around 300 and now that it is at 150, analysts are downgrading it. And this is a really important topic because it shows how Wall Street is always bullish when things are good and then it turns bearish as new information gets in. Nothing wrong with that, but we have to keep in mind that new information leads to analysts changing estimates. They think linearly and they are extremely bullishly biased. That's extremely important. We discussed Seth Klarman's margin of safety, chapter two. He discusses it, how it is a big Wall Street problem for clients to miss how bullish is Wall Street because they make money when things are okay and when you trust them or us, however you want to put it. And we have discussed also recently Google that if we listen to Wall Street, the return over the next few years will be 20% per year if we look at the estimates. And therefore we have to discuss this we have to discuss the current earnings and estimates, the historical situation, and then also the outlook for earnings because it is an extremely important topic to understand how earnings might evolve and where those might lead the market because there is also something very important. I recently listened to Druckenmiller and he said that a strong dollar, high oil prices and rising rates usually lead to a decline of S&P 500 earnings of 25%, which would have a great impact on the market. Let's discuss the estimates. This is the current fact set earnings insight. If you just type this into search, you'll get it and you'll get a great 20, 30 page earnings insight PDF that you can check and see what's going on. So first thing is everyone is always discussing forward 12 months earnings. Why not past 12 months earnings? Because forwards are usually higher, thus more bullish, and it feels so much better. Everything looks much cheaper. But when we look at forward earnings, we see here estimates that were at 240, and now those have slowly, but just so slowly, nothing important started to decline a bit. We'll show how the decline might go to here very easily, which would then have a significant impact on markets and everything. Of course, the recent earnings, everyone is now talking about labor costs, supply chain, currency, import, uh, whatever, China. So always something pressuring down earnings and not enabling to reach estimates. That's what usually happens. But one is a certainty there. The US dollar is 20% higher over the last year, which also impacts exports and demand for products there, for US products, and also impacts US dollar profits in foreign currencies, which is very important also for valuation later. But S&P 500 earnings growth is still estimated of 7% for 2022, but forward PE ratio is just 15 below the 10 year average. Why don't they show the 70 year average? Well, you know the answer because then it wouldn't look so nice. Nevertheless, if we look at the S&P 500 earnings growth four quarter, it's just three, 4% earnings growth and it is even slowly and steadily going lower. So this is 7 October projections for 2023, 8% growth for the S&P 500. I have saved the PDF from 29 April this year and growth were for 10% in 2023. So this is not that much of a difference, still growth, still everything, but I will show you how you might see surprises. And Miller said, if the dollar is strong, if oil is up and the Fed is hiking, expect 25% decline in S&P 500 earnings. And that would have a shocking effect on the stock market, despite that it is already down significantly, it can go lower even more easily, another 50%. If we switch from forward to current earnings, you can see that it is not 240, it is 200. 
Those are the current earnings. And then perhaps something very important to understand that if we have a 25% decline, we would just be where we were in 2019 before the, all the QE stimulus and everything. So 2018, 19, 160 points, then all the money printing during the pandemic that reached to 210, 203. And now people expect that this jump will just continue and in the future will be 250 and more. Of course, that can happen, but why not seeing this revert and going back to 150? Because this has really been a huge jump in earnings and uh, if this was just a temporary impact from all the stimulus, fiscal and budget deficits and money printing and whatever, we were sitting at home spending money. So that might have been only a one-off impact. And if that reverts to the mean, then we'll see ugly times for earnings and for the market consequently. So if earnings drop to 150, and let's say the P ratio drops to 12 as the Fed is hiking, the S&P can easily go to 1,800, which is still 50% down on top of the 25% that's already down pretty, pretty easily. So this can happen too, and it should be something to expect. So this is the impact of the cocktail that historically crashed earnings and everything. Plus we have inflation now, we have extremely high debts, but we'll discuss about the market and how low can this bear market and how long it can last. We'll discuss that more tomorrow. So smash that like button and subscribe and hit that notification bell so that you get notified tomorrow when the new video comes out. Let me show you just one chart that discusses this Wall Street issue with projections and estimates and how those quickly change. Of course, you can't know the future, but the problem with Wall Street is that I always estimate, okay, what has happened in the last few years will just continue for the next two years. And then they don't estimate those business cycles that make things, let's say, natural in the world. And if we look here, earnings estimates started in the early 2000s at 65 for the S&P 500, then those bottomed at 43. So that is a 30, 40% decline. Also 2002, everyone is bullish by the dip, by the dip, by the dip. But until those by the dippers disappear, you will not see a bottom. Similarly here, 2010, look at the estimates and then look at the reality. So estimates were 120, reality was 70 and 2009 estimates 115 and reality was 55. Just expect this here and there. Sometimes analysts are correct, but mostly not. Now on the question, what can save earnings not falling next year, next two years? My frank opinion is nothing. We are in such a situation and we'll discuss that more tomorrow, but yes, some miracles, there might be some rebounds, etc. But it feels like in real terms, the earnings growth we have enjoyed in the last 40 years might come slowly to an end for, let's say, the market as an aggregate. Some companies are going to do great. Some companies are going to do less great, which is something that leads to investing analysis and fundamentals. And you have to then see how it fits you. Of course, if the Fed pivots, if there is a recession, then we have a positive, which is the Fed pivoting and lowering interest rates, but also a negative as a recession. Inflation might continue to push costs higher. We never know what will inflation be. So it is pretty, pretty uncertain. The only certainty is that you cannot model it linearly as those analysts usually do. And when it comes to the outlook, this is again from Miller. You can have a period of 15, 20, 10 years where the market doesn't go anywhere. This doesn't mean you can't make money, but he's just saying that We've had a hurricane behind us for 30, 40 years. That's crucial to understand. That hurricane is reversing. We'll discuss more that tomorrow. And I wouldn't be surprised. In fact, it's my central forecast. The Dow won't be much higher in 10 years than it is now. 
most likely in real terms. So if you want to invest over the next 10 years, see whether you're going to do it like nothing changed since the last four decades or if you want to think about it then it's time to educate yourself listen to my margin of safety summary that's the most important book you might find for the next 10 years i'll see you tomorrow discussing how long might this bear market last